So solve for why. Uh, what about solve for why not? <laughs> why not you, actually? So here, I'm going to, uh, I want to start out with a question. Do you want people to like you more? <laughs> Who wants people to like them more? Yeah. Do you want people to be more open to your ideas? Yeah, of course you do. Do you wish other people's problems would just go away? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I'm here to tell you about a way to have all those nice things happen. Seriously, uh, the idea is to listen. More specifically, to let people finish speaking without interrupting, hold off on advice, and just ask nice questions. Basically like a therapist does, except not charging for it. <laughs> so how does this work? Well, if you listen without interrupting, hold off on advice, and ask good questions, people will like you more. Why? People will like you more because we all love to talk. And when you let the other person talk, their brain lights up. Some wonderful Harvard people did a brain scan study a few years back. And what they found is that the regions of the brain that light up when we're talking about ourselves are the same ones that light up when we're eating ice cream, buying stuff, and having sex. <laughs> Not all at the same time, <laughs> but you know what I mean. People, we are talking about dope amine. <laughs> the other person's dope amine. This is a simple thing. You should see my brain right now. It's like a Christmas tree, friggin' laser show. <laughs> all right, so. If we let people finish speaking without interrupting, hold off on advice and ask good questions, people will be more open to our ideas. How? Well, they'll be more open to our ideas because human nature is to reciprocate. It's a fundamental human law. Look it up on Wikipedia if you don't believe me. It's called reciprocity. We've known about this thing since the beginning of civilization. And when you listen and give someone an audience, it's a profound gift. And they will reciprocate the best that they can by listening and giving you an audience. You might have to wait a year and a half, but you know, sometimes you gotta have a little faith, right? Okay, so if we listen without interrupting, turn off the advice hose, and ask a couple kind-hearted questions, problems can often magically solve themselves. So let's be honest about advice. I mean, people aren't really interested in our awesome solutions. They just want to talk. And plus, they already know that they should get more sleep and work out a couple times a week. They know that they should get out of their crappy relationship, and they know that they should probably ease up on work a bit. They're just not doing it. And us telling them to do something that they're busy not doing has like zero chance of success. <laughs> Seriously. So what people do need is a nice person who will just listen so that they can sort through their stuff see things a little bit more clearly for themselves, and solve their own problems. So let me give you an example of how this can all come together. I have a trick that I use at work. It's called the list in the back pocket technique. So I keep a list of everything I think we can do better, and I keep it in my back pocket, and then I ask everybody else, what do you guys think we can do better? And by the time they're finished talking, 
most of the stuff that's on, that's on my list is crossed off because they bring up the same crap that's on there. To which I say, great idea. <laughs> and then they have the balls, sorry, the chimeritry <laughs> to talk about ideas that are even better than mine. Yeah. And then, you know, I might have a couple of trifles left on my list. And guess what? They're all ears. They love working for me. They're, they're, they're solving their own problems and they're getting all the credit. This works. All right. So, you know, if this works so damn well, how come everybody isn't out there doing it all the time? Listening and everything. Well, for a lot of these blowhards, it's just never occurred to them to have a strategy like this. There's just no awareness there. And then there's the fact that our brains are built and programmed mostly not to do this. Same dopamine story as before, except this time it's about you. You get a big dopamine hit when you talk about your stuff. So, you're in a conversation, someone's speaking to you, and you, you start thinking immediately, oh, I know, they just want to hear what I think. And you butt in and you blah, blah, blah about yourself. Ping, dopamine. And even when we don't interrupt, you know how long we wait before we start talking? On average, 200 milliseconds. <laughs> That's one five thousandths of a second. This is real. Do you know how that's even possible? We can't think that fast. It's because when the other person's speaking, we're busy formulating what we want to say. We're not really listening. And what about when the stakes are a little bit high? Like, I don't want to name any names here, but when your wife is telling you that you <laughs> always forget to roll up the bag in the cereal box. <laughs> you know, then, then people, you are dealing with the ancient lizard region of the brain. It's where the fight or flight animal in all of us lives. It's the amygdala. You've heard this story, right? There's the more recently developed reasoning area of the brain, the frontal lobe, and then there's the old amygdala. And these guys are, you know, in conflict. And the amygdala is saying, talk, talk, fight, win. <laughs> and our higher ability for reasoning basically goes out the window. Yeah. The amygdala is what makes it possible for us to believe we are right when we know that we're wrong. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yep, listening can be all around pretty tough because we all are, at least in part, dopamine addicted lizard brains. <laughs> yeah. So, how do we get over this and overcome our crazy fixation on short-term rewards and the old amygdala hijack? Good question, right? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you go out there and discover the power of this technique for yourself, then you'll probably end up changing your behavior. You know why? Because you'll figure out that in the end, you will get a ton more dopamine. I.e., people will like you more, people will be more open to your ideas, and problems will often magically just go away. Yeah. So here's what I do with my students. At the beginning of each semester, I give them what probably seems like kind of a strange assignment. I say, I want you to go out there and I want you to watch your mind while others are speaking to you. What's going on in there? So they go out there, 
and they, and they realize that as soon as someone's speaking to them, they start thinking about what they want to say. They're not really listening. And this exercise is key because it's designed to develop self-awareness. Awareness is step one. Without it, there's no step two or step three or step 12 for that matter. And this is a warm-up to the full assignment, which of course is to go out there and to let people finish speaking without interrupting, hold off on advice, and just ask a couple kind-hearted questions. And they go out there, and they give it a shot, and they figure out that it works. And they're like, hey, people are more open to my ideas. This is great. Wow. So the context here is a little different. I can't just like assign this to you guys. But instead, think of it as an invitation. Actually, better yet, think of it as a challenge. And if you can't find someone to listen to, I'm, I'm happy to volunteer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Thank you all for listening. As you can tell, I, I really, really appreciate it. I, you know what? I actually like you all more than I even ever thought I would. <laughs> this is great. And if you have any ideas that you'd like to share with me, just see me after the show. I'll be happy to listen.